as you have seen, only three installations, dikes, dams, and nuclear power stations, are specifically protected against attacks under the two additional protocols. However, we must not forget that the protection granted to these installations also extends to military objectives located at or in the vicinity of these works or installations. Dikes, dams and nuclear power stations receive additional protection. Even if they are transformed into a military objective in the usual meaning of that notion, they remain protected against any attack which may cause severe losses to the civilian population by the release of the dangerous forces. And severe losses must be assessed as such, not in relation to the military advantage anticipated from the attack. In other words, even if the military advantage is very significant and could justify severe civilian casualties in case of an attack against any usual military objective, it could not do so with respect to works and installations containing dangerous forces as well as objects located in the vicinity. It is true that such additional protection may be waived, but only in extreme circumstances. Attacks may indeed be directed against the protected objects and cause severe losses among the civilian population by the release of the dangerous forces. Not only, of course, if such losses are proportionate to the military advantage, but also, and more specifically, if the protected objects become a military objective under very strict conditions. They must be used in regular, significant and direct support of military operations. This is much stricter than just effectively contributing to the military action of the enemy. Finally, both the protected objects and any military installation used to defend them are protected from attack, provided the following two conditions are met. Firstly, that the military installations are only used for defensive purpose, which may be hardly difficult to establish in practice. Secondly, that, and I quote Article 56 of Additional Protocol 1, the armament is limited to weapons capable only of repelling hostile action against the protected works or installation. The RC study of customary IHL concluded that the protection for works and installations has not reached a customary status. The RCRC only recognized an obligation of precaution when attacking works and installations containing dangerous forces, both in international and non-international conflicts. This is based in part on declarations of states not party to additional protocol one such as the United States, which recognize that any attack on such objects must be assessed in light of proportionality, but do not accept any additional protection.